you see right here is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro. And I'm going to tell you my experience with it. And if you should get it yourself, if you're a beginner or a veteran astrophotographer, I'll tell you some pros and cons about it. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll show you some pictures I've gotten with it. And just overall how the mount performs. Um, but yeah, here we go. So I'm going to tell you my experience with the mount. And if I've had any problems with it. Um, I've had a few problems with it, yes. Of course. Like every other photographer, they have problems with their equipment each night. Um, I'm sure many of you know what I'm talking about. But with the mount, the tracking with this mount is very nice. I was able to put my Xenostar 61 mounted on it with a freaking Canon, which is, the, you know, Canon camera is pretty heavy. But um, it tracked the night sky pretty well. I, I was able to use the exposure of th up to three minutes, actually, with this one. But polar alignment had to be kind of spot on. And not back then, which means like seven months ago, <laughs> seven months ago um, my polar lining was mm, but uh, now I'm kind of better with polar lining, and um, it's more accurate now. Yeah, but the tracking of the mount is very nice. Um, and I'll tell you how to use the mount right now. So I'm going to try to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to explain this the best I can, because uh, I'm really bad at explaining things. When you look through the polar scope, you'll see this reticle right here. This exact one. Pretty much on every Skywatcher mount, you're going to see this reticle. Um... And that little black dot, that's Polaris. You should be able to see Polaris when you look through the scope if you're roughly north. Now, you're going to move your adjust adjustment knobs, which are at the bottom of the mount, and you're going to, you'll, see, you'll start to see Polaris move, and you're going to move Polaris to where the app shows where Polaris is, and you're going to move it there. Um, you can spend as much time as you want. If you want to spend 10 minutes, go ahead. Spend 10 minutes trying to polar line, trying to get it perfect. Spend, I spent a while trying to polar line. With this mount, it, now it takes me like a minute to do it because I have a little light, which I'll show you what I mean. But uh, yeah, little black dot, that's Polaris. So after you move Polaris to where the app shows, you're actually going to turn on the mount. Boop, like that. And it should turn red if you have the batteries in, which I hope you do and the mount will start tracking. It is that simple. And I love the how simple it was. When I first started, I was kind of daunted by polar lining, but I'm like, wait, this is kind of easy. It's actually not too hard. Um, and I'll show you what makes life so much easier with polar lining. Um, but that's how you, that's how you uh, turn on the mount and polar line the mount. So I'll actually show you a little gadget that is pretty handy for um, polar lining this mount. It's this little guy right here. This little illumination light. It's really awesome. So what you do with it is you just slap it on and then you turn it on. And you should see a little red light. So when you look through, because if it's dark, you won't see, you probably won't be able to see the little, the little like the reticle. Um, that's if you're polar lining later in the night. Uh, usually what I do and most astrophotographers do, they, um, we, we polar line right, like, bef once the sun sets, you, you can see the brightest stars and you, you'll see, um, Polaris, and it'll be bright enough, it, it'll be bright enough to see, like, the reticle through it, so that usually helps. But with this, if it's later in the night, you have this little thing, and it actually really helps with polar lining. It usually takes me like a minute, 30 seconds to polar line. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, it's really helpful. Um, it's really, really inexpensive. Um, if you get the mount, you should definitely look into this. Unless it comes with it. I kind of forgot. I think I bought it separately. Or it came with it. I'm, I can't remember. But, um, yeah, it's a cool gadget. You should, uh, should uh, get the little thing if you're going to polar line later in the night. So I'll tell you my experience on this mount, or with the mount. Um, I can tell you my experience has been pretty great with it. Um, I can show you some pictures I've taken with it. Um, 
can I think of any problems I've had with it? Mm, I've had some tracking issues sometimes, but I think that was because of my my polar alignment. But other than that, I've only had it for like nine months, so eight or nine months. So I really haven't had any problems with it yet. I can say that it's a great mount. It tracks the night sky really well. Three minute subs. Um, Stars are pretty sharp if you have the polar line like accurate. Um, it can hold 11 pounds, which is nice. That can fit a small telescope like mine, and it can it can fit a camera lens or like a telephoto lens. Um, it can fit all those, and it would still track really well. It's got to balance it right, and you'll be good to go. Um, I haven't tried any Milky Way stuff with it, or I haven't tried any of that. But um, maybe in the future I will. Actually, no, in the future I will 100% try it out. And uh, I'll tell you guys how that went. Yeah, the mount's great. There's nothing really bad about it. Maybe maybe the little knob here. Um, actually, Trevor said this in his video, Astro Backyard. Uh, he said this in his video, where if you're traveling and you hit like a bump or something, uh, then and you have batteries in here, like the, the knob will actually turn and and you come to your like camping site and like oh the batteries are dead oh man and that's probably why because the knob is really loose but that's just kind of like a small detail or small problem but um, other than that the little gadget I showed you um, I actually haven't lost it yet surprisingly it's gotta be careful with that little thing because it is small and you probably lose it somewhere and I'll, I'll, I'll probably lose it somehow someday anyway yeah the mount it's it's a great mount for $500 it's great um, highly highly suggested if you're beginning um, I'll put a link in the description about it so you can buy it yourself so I guess I can end it with um, with this if you're getting started in astrophotography deep sky astrophotography or Milky Way or any of that this mount is great. Um, like I said, I'll put it in the description. You can buy it yourself. You can check it out, look at it, see how you like it. Um, there wasn't much I could say about it, to be honest, because I really haven't had that many problems with it. I've only had like good things, which is a plus. That's good. Um, other than the whole tracking issue, I think that was because the polar line it was off, but it can always be fixed. But um, I'll show you the pictures I've gotten with this. I'll leave it with that guys. I appreciate you guys watching the video. I really do. Thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. That's insane. Like, that's that's crazy. 100 subscribers, man. Try to upload more. It's just hard to motivate myself to make YouTube videos because sometimes things just go wrong. But um, I'll try my best here. But uh, the Skywatch Star Adventure, it's a great mount. Um, highly suggest it. Um, I'm not saying go buy it. No, go buy it. I'm not saying that you should look into it first um, There's probably way better videos that there out there about it. Um, check out maybe Trevor's review um, It's a good review, but I just want to tell you how I felt about the mount and uh, it's a great mount You should uh, look into it if you're getting if you're getting started in the hobby. So um, that being said I appreciate you guys watching It's been me, Kale Crone, or Astro Crone, and I'll see you guys in the next video Thank you. Monkey.